Even all remarks here, back again with another video, back again with another Oculus Go how-to video. Now, I don't know about you, I'm sick and tired of waiting for USB on-the-go support for the Oculus Go. Now, you can connect things like controllers and keyboards and stuff to the USB port on here, but things like USB keys and hard drives and all that sort of good stuff where you can put all your media, films and images just doesn't work yet. We are promised that it's coming. If you plug a drive in here, it does make a noise so it knows it's there. If you sideload some apps, you can access the files straight away. But that's all a bit of a faff. There is a slightly easier and kind of actually quite a cool way of doing it using something called a TP-Link AC750. This basically creates a little 5G or 2.4G um, Wi-Fi hotspot that you can plug your USB devices in so your hard drives and your memory sticks and all that sort of stuff, plug them into this and then you can access them via the media apps on your Oculus Go to be able to watch them and play them. And the great thing with this is, is if you know you create this hotspot with a hard drive in, not just one Oculus Go can connect, multiple can connect to one thing. So you only need to put the media onto one drive and they can all connect to it. Mobile phones can connect to it, TVs can connect to it, other things can connect to it. So that is really handy. It's also quite handy if you've got, say, virtual desktop and you only have a 2.4 gigahertz connection on your Wi-Fi, you can use this instead as the network. So still connect this to your normal 2.4 gig Wi-Fi, but use this as the kind of the internet point, and then everything connects to this uses the 5G on this instead. So that's pretty handy. It improves the performance there. And for just general goodness, you can use this in hotels and other places where you only have, say, one internet connection. You pay your overpriced $15 for about three hours, and then you can connect this to it, and then everything else, multiple devices, can connect to this. So this has a lot of different uses, and it's worth grabbing. It costs £35. You can get some cheaper ones, but this one's quite good because it has the 2.4 gigahertz and the 5 gigahertz connection. So it makes it a little bit faster, a little bit more stable, especially for sort of high quality media. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to set this up, how to connect this to your Oculus Go and share your media, and how to get some good use out of it. So let's uh, jump into it. Welcome back. Here's the box that it comes in. Uh, I think in America it's a slightly different box to this one, so you may sort of have a slightly different design. But uh, as you can see there, it comes with the device itself. And as you can see there, it has a USB port on the bottom. Focus on that. Along with the charging port there as well. And you can actually use that to kind of connect it to your PC to be a wired hotspot. You've got a port for Ethernet. So if you do go to a hotel or something that has... I'll focus on it. That has sort of only a wired connection. You can plug it in there and share that. There's a little setting switch there. There's nothing on there, nothing on there, and nothing on there, and nothing on there. All right, I say I lie. There is some little flashy buttons and some switches on there, but we'll get to that. Uh, where else do you get in the box? You get yourself a little Ethernet cable, uh, handy. You get a little micro USB cable. There we go. So micro USB one end, normal the other end. Uh, that's for charging. It also comes with, in the UK at least, a normal three pin sort of power adapter, um, AC sort of uh, one for um, USB devices. And this is actually the perfect charger for the Oculus Go. It is a five volt, two amp charger. So that'd be perfect for charging your Oculus Go and keeping it charged. So even if you don't, because in the UK actually, we don't get a plug with our Oculus Go, we have to kind of use something else. So this is actually a pretty good charger anyway to come with it. And then you can even use this cable if you want to, or the one that comes with you go. Bargain. You also get a few books, a little sort of quick start guide, but we'll go through how, what you need to do to set it all up. As I say, to power it up, all you need to do is plug in your USB cable. Where's it gone? Over here. We plug that into there, so micro USB into there, normal USB here, and for this demo, I'm gonna use a power bank. So I've got one of these power banks that I use from my Oculus Go. You can use the plug, you can plug it into the wall, but just for pure convenience that I don't have a plug right here next to me, I'm gonna plug it into there, and that's more than enough to keep this powered. There are some of these devices that you can get that uh, actually come with a battery built in, but be sure that it's got five gigahertz on it, because that's kind of the key to getting some good performance with your Oculus Go and your Oculus Go Media. So there we go, that's that plugged in there. You can see some little lights are coming on and it's sent itself all up. Once it's kind of stopped flashing and it's all happy, what you need to do is connect to this. So what we need to do is on our PC, we want to go to this website, 
but first we need to log into the router itself. So if we go down to our network, this is all on Windows, we search for our network, we want the one that's TP link something something or other, there's a 5G button there, we'll connect to that, and enter the, the network security key, and that is found on the back of the router. It is in tiny, tiny little writing. It is the second one down on that side, you're not gonna be able to see that but I'll just type these numbers in here. Right, there we go, once you're connected, you should be all fine, and now we're on the, technically the fake internet, of the uh, device itself, so that's as easy as it is to connect to it. So if you've ha if you've got um, a mobile phone or a tablet or the Oculus Go even, you go to the Wi-Fi settings, you find that network, you tap in the security code, which is on the back of the router, you're in. Uh, obviously at the moment, it technically doesn't have an internet connection, so if we go to this website here, we just dial in and just hit refresh on this uh, page here. And once the setting page opens, the pass the username and password is just admin and admin. So login. And then the key sort of information that we want here is you want to go through the quick setup. So if we just click through setup, dynamic IP, that's all kind of down to you, depends on your set, um, situation. Uh, then when you log it into your Wi-Fi connect work, uh, connect work, network. Uh, so find you on here, I'm Netgear 5G, that's my one. You click connect, uh, connect. You enter your password for your connection there. I'll enter mine and I'll blur that all out so you can't see my password. I don't know you're sneaking up on me else and connect to my network. And then you just scroll down and click next. At this point you could change the password or something if you wanted something a bit easier to remember that's on the bottom of the router. But I think for convenience I'm going to keep it like that because it's not like uh, I'm going to be away from that router if I'm not going to, you know, if I'm not using it sort of thing. Uh, then once it's finished, you just click finish, and then it's connected to my actual house Wi-Fi. Uh, the reason why you do that is because you're essentially sharing that Wi-Fi connection. So if you're actually sort of going to a hotel, you'd follow the same process there. You go to this website, you go through that process, the quick setup, you connect to the work to the sort of um, the Wi-Fi connection uh, on the hotel or wherever you are. Uh, on a mobile phone or something, and away you go. So once you're in, we can then jump across to USB settings. So this is the key one. So we've got our USB key here. So when the Oculus Go eventually does get USB storage, I will be using one of these. Come on, focus on it, go on. Q on, Q on. Don't focus on me, focus on the stick, the thing that's right in front of you, there you go. So as you can see, this is a USB stick, it's 32 gig but you can slide it between normal USB and micro USB. So I can plug that into my PC to be able to drag, drop files across, and then I can use that to connect to the Oculus Go to plug it in. But I guess the good thing about having this kind of router instead is this router thing could be in your bag or your drawer or wherever on the side, and there's nothing hanging off. There's no wires hanging off. You can just plug in a charger instead if you want to. Um, and it's all wireless connected, so there's no sort of, you know, sort of uh, worry that you might be knocking off. So even when storage does come out, this is probably still a pretty valid option to use. Um, and as you can obviously share it with more than one people, uh, more than one person anyway, um, it kind of seems like a really useful device and something that I can see me using a lot going forward. So what we need to do is on our device is we'll switch this to normal USB mode. There we go. Uh, and then on the router, where, uh, where the power actually plugs in. Just there, there's the USB port. We'll plug this into there. Oh, and I'm just messing it all up just because I'm on camera. There we go, plug him in. There we go, and then it's just in. And then if we just refresh this page in a couple of seconds, there's a little light on there, there's a flash and says, oh, get yeah, USB is now on there. There we go, flashed, flashed, refreshed even. The key thing with storage for this is it needs to be in FAT32 or NTFS format. So you don't know what that is, you're going to need to kind of look into that yourself, but basically um, it's just two common kind of formatting formats for drives. Most drives and USB sticks and that sort of thing are in these formats already, so you're not got an issue. But if you don't have that, you might need to reformat your drive. So if you literally go into your windows here, type in format, you can sort of see that you can click on a drive that's connected to your PC and you can actually format it into the right format. So it's all pretty straightforward, but it's probably best you follow a dedicated video for that, which I don't have. But if we look here, this is already a FAT32 drive. It's 28.6 gigabyte capacity, which actually it's like more, um, but you usually get sort of part of it taken up, don't you, with uh, other rubbish. So once we know that drive is in, we need to go on this left-hand menu to media server. And you can see I've set up a few here. So I'm gonna delete all of these 
because they're just gonna confuse things. We'll start fresh. So from the top, enable server, enable. Media share one, can't change the server name for some reason, whatever. Scan now, we'll click that, and you can kind of set how often it scans. So it just scans for new media and new information on the drives and stuff like that. Don't need to worry about that. Click add new folder. We'll name this uh, USB key. Uh, we'll click browse, and it says choose a volume. So we'll choose SanDisk Ultra, which is the drive that we've clicked on. And then it gives you a folder. So on your drive itself, you have to create a folder to put your stuff in. So whether you create a video folder and then nest different folders underneath with your media and your files, that's probably the best option to do. So I've created a folder in there called media. We click on that, we click apply, and that basically sets it all up, ready for us to dial in with our Oculus Go and find it. I like to just click save anyway, just to make sure. But let's jump in our Oculus Go and I'll show you how you can access that media file. All right, so here we are in our Oculus Go. First thing you want to do is connect the Oculus Go to the same Wi-Fi network that the other one, that the uh, device is for. So if you go to settings, then to Wi-Fi, and then you find the Wi-Fi network here. So we know it's the TP-Link 5G. I've already set that up and sort of uh, logged in with it so it's the same sort of process you find it you click on it you enter the password that's on the bottom of the device and then you should connect to it like we have done there then we jump into home and what I would suggest as media players is Skybox or Pegasus I like Pegasus because I can look at my photos as well as my videos and um, so I do a lot of sort of 360 and VR 180 sort of photos so they're better in Pegasus but Skybox works for video but we'll show, you, we'll show you both quickly. So if I jump into Skybox here, let's turn this up a little bit, shall we, so you can kind of hear some beeping at least, that my Oculus Go is alive. And here we go. So here's some random files that are on my Oculus Go here. But if we go to Network, you can see Media Share is there. Click on that. USB key, hello. And then you can see I've only got one video file in there at the moment, which is an hour long zombie background for for that I used uh, Halloween. Uh, basically, basically I used this in a projector, shined it upon a shower curtain in a window and it looked super freaky and it scared all the kids away. I saved a ton of money on sweets and candy that year. Uh, but there you go, so I would say I've tested some videos. You can play 360, you can play um, VR 180. You can access your photos, you can access your music, anything that you store, if you create a folder for it and drop it in and then it's connected to the uh, the TP link, you can access it in your Oculus Go. So let's just jump into Pegasus as well, uh, just to show you another media player. And this is kind of the reason why I like Pegasus. It, I know some people don't like Pegasus. I like it. it just, it just plays everything. It's one media player for everything that I've got. It was kind of my media player for last year. So main menu here, DNA, DLNA, media share, USB key, and then we've got the same things here, but we've actually got some photos here. So we can click on one of these. And funny enough, photos do play as like a slideshow automatically. They're quite big photos because these are, these are photos from um, my Insta360 uh insta360 pro 2 camera so it's an 8k video camera so if we kind of click here you've got sort of options for kind of viewing them and changing them to 360 and all that sort of stuff but you can sort of see so photos all in uh this is one i kind of took on uh, a job i went to uh, comic-con uh, but you can access all your photos all your media just loading as i say they are big there we go Oh, it has to kind of come in a little bit blurry for a second there, but there you go. And I've tried streaming video files, big ones, 4K ones. They generally seem to be okay, but what I would say is for the Oculus Go, you probably don't need them. Unless you're doing 360 video, then I'd probably go for 4K. But if you're just doing sort of videos to watch in a normal cinema, like normal films and movies and TV programs, 1080p or even 720p is absolutely fine, and you get decent quality out of that. So let's uh, jump back out. So there we go, there's the TP-Link AC750. So there you go, USB plugged in. I've used it with uh, these drives as well. So these little sort of SSD drives, that worked fine. All I would say is make sure you format it to the correct format. Same as well as these ones. If you do need a power bank that needs, um, if you do have a, sorry, a drive that needs power, you will still need to plug that in separately. But if it's just kind of one of these that doesn't need it, it's fine. Although actually when I do plug this one in, this does turn off, but immediately turn back on again. So I guess it's kind of like a big power draw, and this goes, Ugh! 
that's a bit that's a bit much but then it does catch up and it's absolutely fine one thing to consider as well is you go onto the oculus website here it does say that usb storage is in and how you can do it now we know it doesn't work um but it does say that you need to make sure your oculus go is 60 percent 60 percent powered before you can use it well the great thing about this is you don't need to worry about that percentage you can run all the way down to zero and because it's over a Wi-Fi network, you don't have to worry about charging your Oculus Go to full power. So even when USB storage comes out for the Oculus Go and it's built in by default and you can stick these USB keys straight in, uh, you'll still, you know, you still have to obviously make sure you're up to 60%. So if you run lower than 60%, will this stop working? Will the drive stop working? Well, we'll, ne we'll need to see it and see what happens. But the great thing with this is you can just stick it in a bag you know, with a with a power bank, it doesn't need to be this big. It can be smaller. It can be plugged into a cigarette lighter or plugged into the wall or whatever you want to do. You might even want to just use this in your house as a private little network for your own bedroom or something like that. You know, keep it separate from the rest of the house so they can't see what you're up to. Um, it's got various kind of settings and stuff that you can change, pretty much like a normal router that you can change with this. And as I say, things like virtual desktop rely on a nice strong stable connection so just like we did there is if we use virtual desktop with this now um when they were both connected to this that's a 5g network so that would be better than 2.4g it's a stronger connection and obviously you probably have things a little bit close anyway so you should be absolutely fine and hopefully get a better performance and i think for me using this like with the family so if i'm going away on a trip a car trip I can load this full of media, full of songs, full of videos, whatever. The boys can access it on their tablets. I can access it, you know, via my phone and stream it to the car stereo. You know, I can do, you know, this is this is a great value little device. And as I say, you can get cheaper versions. There are some RAV power ones that people talk about that have had kind of mixed reviews and spotty sort of connection with video. Um, I've not had any real issues with this one with, vid with video. I've only had it a few days because I couldn't, I didn't actually have a RAV power one, but I couldn't find it. So I was like, well, solid. Let's get a better one. And I got this. So the RAV power one does come with batteries built in. And that one's probably actually quite good for connecting memory cards and sort of hard drives because you can use those to copy each other across sort of thing to back up stuff. Whereas you can't with this one. Uh, so maybe sort of slightly different uses for the two things. But this one, absolutely worth the money. I'm looking forward to kind of using this. Uh, I think it's going to add a lot of life to my Oculus Go. Let me know in the comments down below, what do you use to share media? Is this something you may be looking into? Let me know down below if you've got any questions. I'll try and answer as many as I can. I'm super active down there. Uh, I'm still answering questions from videos that I first posted when I very first started the channel. Uh, so hopefully I don't miss any and I answer every single question down there. But for me, this was a good £35 well spent. I think that's, I think I checked on Amazon.com and it was $40. Um, so that's kind of up to you whether you like it or not, whether you think you'll make use of it. But I think it's got a lot of uses for it beyond just the Oculus Go that's probably worth a purchase. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Thumbs down if you didn't. That's fine. I'm big enough and ugly enough to take it if you didn't like it. But do let me know down below why you didn't like it and try and do better for next time. Become one of the Remarkles. Hit that subscribe button and that notification bell to be notified when I next upload a video. And that's me done. I'm out. Have a virtual high five.